Mrs. Sempre m'equivoco. Thank you, Mr. President, Mrs. Deputy Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me to this important meeting and indeed for drawing our attention to the youth agenda. The Parliamentary Assembly has definitely a long track record in showing strong interest in youth issues and in supporting the development of youth sector of the Council of Europe. It is enormously uplifting to find this interest as energetic as ever. Mr. Schneider has made this clear in his thoughtful report for which I would like to thank him. Just a few hours ago, we reopened the youth center here in Strasbourg after its recent necessary renovation. The youth center here, as well as its sister in Budapest, are vital and central instruments for Council of Europe and its practical operations of the youth policy. This is therefore an excellent moment to discuss the challenges for youth in Europe of today and tomorrow. As Mr. Snyder has pointed out in his report, there are many challenges. Some challenges can be seen as problems, others as opportunities. The Council of Europe has established a number of key elements for implementing this policy. A prime element is participation, the involvement of young people in the policy making. The authorities cannot provide all the answers, neither can we expect the young to solve problems by themselves. Irrespective of age or being elected politicians, government representatives, or member of civil societies, we all have to contribute to find ways forward. The Council of Europe is continuously stress stressing this interaction and is also practicing it with considerable success within its youth sector. Youth participation within the Council of Europe is practiced in many ways and at different levels. One such level is what we call co-management, where youth organizations and the government representatives sit down and reach agreement together on different aspects of youth policy. The principle of co-management on youth issues has a long and successful history in the Nordic Cooperation. I find it very satisfying that the same success is realized in the Council of Europe. Another element is mainstreaming of the youth dimension into policy making. Youth policy is not isolated specific sector by its cross-sectorial nature, it requires a wide range of joint efforts. Youth policy means mainstreaming of policy making at local, regional, and national, and international levels. It means considering the youth dimension that is best understood by the youth themselves. I want to see a strong role for the youth sector in coordinating youth policy aspects of all other relevant policy areas of the Council of Europe. This mainstreaming principle was agreed by the, the third summit of heads of state and government in Varsa 2005. I believe more progress is needed to, for putting the principle into practice. It was important then, and it still is. Compasito, the Manual of Human Rights Education for Children, 
is one good example of successful cooperation between two sectors, child and youth. I look forward to more such examples of successful mainstream, mainstreaming efforts. Mr. President, the Council of Europe is the organization of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. They are our core values. However, respecting human rights, practice, practicing democracy, and strengthening the rule of law is not only a matter of legal standards and their implementation. It is equally a matter of comprehension and commitment. This is why youth policy must remain high on the agenda of the Council of Europe. The active involvement of young generation in the struggle for human rights, democracy, and indeed for unity in Europe is crucially important. Thanks to its broad membership that stretches through though the pan-European area, the Council of Europe is well positioned to be a vital forum where diverse ideas can be brought together and converted into common perspectives. In order to spread the core values of Council of Europe, we need both formal and non-formal education. The work carried out by the Council of Europe using non-formal education has been very successful. And it is our hope and expectations that it will go from strength to strength in the future. As you sure know, the youth organizations embrace non-formal education and use it very successfully. Cooperation is not important only for countries. It is also important between organiz uh, international organizations. It is therefore gratifying that the cooperation between the Council of Europe and the European Union in the youth field works pleasingly. I welcome that this cooperation celebrates its 10th anniversary this year and that both the Council of Europe and the European Union share the strong interest in continuing joint efforts. The Kiev Conference for Ministers of Youth next week will give a restart to the youth policy of the Council of Europe. I hope that the content in Agenda 2020 will inspire the youth policy of the Council of Europe for many years to come. The Swedish chairmanship would like the Committee of Ministers to adopt a resolution on the youth policy in the near future. The work carried out by the Council of Europe on the basis of the Kiev Conference has, of course, to be transferred into our respective countries. As decision makers, we need to ask ourselves what improvements are necessary and what inspiration the work of the Council of Europe can give. In this respect, I believe that the involvement of civil society in the Council of Europe sector will be of help. Free and strong civil society is crucial for developing successful youth policies. Financial support by member states to youth organizations is therefore useful. The Council of Europe gives us a unique opportunity to continue exchange of experiences. I would like to thank you, distinguished parliamentarians, for, continuing, uh, for co contributing to these efforts. And I wish you a fruitful debate. Thank you.